Good evening. Welcome to Ask the Home Inspector here on Berks Community Television. I'm your host, Joe Kelly, and I've been doing home inspections here in the Berks and surrounding communities for the past 17 years with over 5,000 satisfied customers. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy the show tonight. The show is underwritten by Keystone Ashley, which is the local Berks County chapter of the American Society of Home Inspectors. Over the course of this series, uh, I've tried to explain to you how a house works and what you do, what you need to do to keep it working. And um, this is an audience participation show, so if you have a question this evening that's relevant to tonight's show, uh, please feel free to call in at 610-378-0426. Our guest tonight is Greg Boja of Boja Engineering. And uh, so, Greg, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the opportunity to be here with you tonight. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege mm -hmm. to be on your show. Um, again, my name is Greg Boja with Boja Engineering. We do a lot of land development, traffic, uh, design, stormwater design, uh, construction services, survey, and insurance investigations. Uh, some of the the larger projects that we've worked on, uh, say for medical, would be like the post-acute hospital over at uh, Paper Mill Road and oh. Van Reed Road. Uh, we've done other senior care facilities, and we've worked on numerous schools throughout the area, also industrial, uh, whether it be warehouses or uh, other manufacturers in the area, even Great. things like Yingling. And also, recently, I think Panera Bread was a, a favorite for the people over in Exeter, <laughs> so they didn't have to drive all the way to the Broadcasting Square to, to get their bre or lunches. Okay. And then we also work on a lot of residential, whether it be like an annexation for folks. If it's like if somebody wants to uh, have a little piece of land that they agreed with their neighbors and how to get that onto to their deed. Uh, we also do the opposite when people aren't working together. If there's a, a property line type issue, uh, we, we can go ahead and get that surveyed for people so that way they know exactly where their property line is. Um, and we also do other uh, subdivisions for, say, putting in apartment complexes or large land developments. So that, all of that involves uh, a lot of municipal interaction and uh, land development uh, and uh, groundwater surveys and so forth. That's correct. Yeah, we work a lot with municipalities, uh, the conservation district from the county, and DEP to go ahead and gain a lot of those approvals, as well as a lot of the, the utilities and authorities, so that the, the buildings, whether it be a house or a commercial building, can get hooked up. Uh, yeah, the utilities are something uh, big with, uh, with homeowners. They typically don't understand underground utilities, where they are, where they're located, and what to do or not to do on top of them. Uh, they can put plants on top or, tr or trees that can uh, physically damage their sewer line, electric line, uh, all kinds of different uh, potential problems there. Yeah. With, with utilities, one good thing to do is uh, Pennsylvania has a PA one call system that if, you know, if you're digging out in your yard and you were concerned about utilities, they'll come out and mark out your property to and make they, sure they that... do it for, you, for the homeowner once for free. And typically right. there's a, a sticker on your electric meter outside that gives you the number, uh, the 800 number. And um, they'll do it once for you for free and in case you're buying a, a house that's previously constructed and you're not sure where your utilities are. You can, uh, you can do that and um, draw a picture, take pictures. It's a great idea. Yeah. So most of what you do is, is in the commercial realm. Yes. Okay. Um, is there a percentage of uh, residential stuff or? Um, a, a large percentage is in the commercial, probably a good 50 or 60 percent. And then the, the rest is in residential and land developments and also the, the other insurance investigations that I mentioned. Insurance investigations, that sounds interesting. Um, can you explain that a little bit? What uh, you mean for the insurance company if the person has a claim? 
Uh, on average, we would work for an insurance company. Uh, basically, if their ingester wanted some help or a, a reference to figure out why something broke or fell apart, uh, they would give an engineer a call that's familiar with doing that kind of work. And uh, we go out there and evaluate the, the site or the, the scene and, and then go ahead and figure out the, pretty much what happened and, and why the, the problem arose. Soil stability, um, groundwater runoff, uh, whatever, whatever the cause may have been. You know, exactly right. It's pretty obvious. A tree fell on the roof, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah. Yeah, but, so don't call you on that one. They, they don't call me on that one. No. So uh, is there a way that the average homeowner or, or uh, a person can identify potentially structural concerns that need addressed? Sure. A lot of times you'll see cracks and not necessarily hairline cracks if it was in a foundation or uh, some of the, the lumber type supports that might be in your house. But if you start seeing cracks, especially with lumber, uh, if you see a horizontal crack, not always, but likely there's possibilities that it was just drying of the wood. Mm -hmm. Where if you start seeing the, the jagged type cracks, that's when it was under stress in wood and in wood yeah. and that's when it's very likely that you have an issue and you should either get an engineer or an expert in to, to help you resolve that when it's in concrete there's typical shrinkage uh cracking that goes on it's almost impossible to pour a piece of concrete without it cracking someplace correct correct and and they try and put in you know uh, uh, stress points or you know fracture relief cuts in the floor or what have you but mm -hmm. never works <laughs> not not but, well enough. But they're not they're not structural in nature, uh, floor or wall, mm -hmm. uh, little cracks like that. And there are you know I've I've heard of people that were concerned with teeny little one thirty second of an inch cracks that are going up, and uh, they do have repair methods for that, uh, and epoxy fills and things like that. Yep, they they certainly can do that if if that's a concern or. Maybe if that, that wall might have been under some sort of hydrostatic pressure, then there's certainly techniques where you could fill and, and seal those types of cracks if necessary. Yeah, I often, I, you know, people say, well, why, was, why is there a line of dirt all the way around the top of the foundation? Well, that's before the house was on. They had a rainstorm and the mud washed <laughs> over the wall. Or these splashes on the side. Well, that's how they poured your concrete floor. They poured it through one of the basement windows and it splashed back up. So, <clears throat> what, what can an average homeowner do to prevent moisture infiltration in, into a basement or you know, hydraulic you know, static pressure against the foundation? Sure. A, a lot of things is trying to figure out water and how it's getting close to the, the foundation. Uh, lot like an onion, it could be more than just one type of, of issue. Uh, as you peel it back, you could see that it would be grading maybe on the exterior and trying to get the water away from the, the foundations. Uh, others is maybe a downspout got disconnected mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of other times you might see that vegetation was allowed to, to grow up and maybe choke off where water was originally intended to go. Um, the type of soils, uh, do you have a soils geology aspect to your uh, firm? as far as um, for a lot of our projects what we'll do is we can do infiltration testing it's part of of our process with DEP uh, what we use is a double o-ring infiltrometer and basically it's steel metal you would bang it into the ground and fill it up and you can figure out how fast the the water is infiltrating at that specific site and what type of soils do we typically have in the Berks County here. I know it varies from, varies from one neighborhood to the next, but a little shale and a lot of silt and clay. Okay, so silt and clay is a good thing because water runs off of that, yeah. whereas shale is frabble and water is going to run through that a lot, uh, a lot faster. Correct. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so proper uh, nine times out of ten, I, I find moisture in a basement due to improper roof runoff. Uh, gutters, mm -hmm. downspouts aren't extended far enough away from the base from the uh, from the foundation, and the water's just seeping in the corners. So if you see 
moisture or efflorescence in the corners of the basement, um, sometimes that's easily corrected by downspout discharge? Could be. Could be. Yep. And soil sediment, uh, when, they, when they dig a foundation, they usually dig three or five foot bigger than the footprint of the foundation itself. So, of course, they, have, they can work on the outside, do waterproofing, French drainage, whatever needs to be done. Uh, and then they really can't compact those soils against the foundation again. Is that correct? Right. A lot of times they'll use different backfills, whether it's a, a soil mix or some people will actually use some stones against it and try to, to figure out a drainage system to wick it away if, if necessary. But that's still disturbed soil. It's no longer virgin. It's not doesn't match the what's outside. Correct. Yep. And the potential for ground settlement around the foundation is pretty good. It is. They you know, mound it up and hopefully let Mother Nature take it back down to where it's supposed to be, but oftentimes it's not correct. Right. A, a lot of times it's good to have a little bit of mound near your foundation but you, you don't want the, the soil to be touching anything higher than the foundation itself. You want it to be just slightly below so the, the water has a chance to get away and you don't have termites coming up. Yeah, they're sneaky little devils <clears throat> who live in the ground outside, don't live in the wood inside. Um, but typically now, um, and I'm really not supposed to get into code stuff, there's supposed to be a six to eight inch reveal of the foundation all the way around the entire house. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can catch these little buggers you know, by little mud tunnels before they're in there eating your wood. That, that, that's great for all the new houses and people like me who have a, an old house that's actually part log cabin. Yeah. It's something you, you want to keep up on to, to keep them out. Yeah. And the landscaping they put up against the house, you know, when you buy a new house and, and of course, you know, it's bare, barren, you want to uh, you know, make it look pretty. And the first thing they often do is uh, do landscaping. And the landscaping they, that you put in is often way too close to the house uh, because you haven't taken into consideration the type of root ball system that's in it, how big is it going to get, is it going to rub against the house, and so forth. And that uncompacted or virgin soil against the house is a great place for the roots to go. That and it'll find a, a roof leader under the ground or the, the sewer line if it can. Yeah, yeah sewer lines are, are, are a problem with that kind of stuff. So when does something, uh, how about horizontal cracking in a foundation, uh, a block foundation? What's that typically uh, from? A lot of times if you see something like that, if it was in a foundation, uh, your, your first thought would be that there might be some hydrostatic pressure against the wall that would cause a, a little bit of a, a buckle, mm -hmm. maybe about a, a third to half the way up the wall. And if you saw that buckle, there's a reasonable chance that might be the, the culprit. And again, it's potentially from improper roof runoff or low spots around the foundation allowing the water to pool. Yep. Not necessarily a soil condition uh, such as frabble shale or... N shouldn't yeah. be as much soil conditions as probably just some sort of pressure pushing in that wasn't designed. Are there ways to repair that, um, those type of cracks? Um, there are. Obviously, you could just go ahead and jack up the whole house and, <laughs> and fix it from there <laughs> and, and never see the problem again. Or sometimes you'll see some people put some steel supports inside the, mm -hmm. the foundation and attach that. Other times, uh, they might go to the exterior and try to figure out a way how to relieve the external pressure that was forcing uh, in on the wall to remove that as well. I've seen some less than professional attempts at repair, uh, and uh, I understand you were telling me earlier that there's a, uh, a way to seal coat the outside of the foundation without necessarily excavating? Yes, yeah, so there's a, a company, and they specialize in underground waterproofing, uh, Setco, I don't know if you know them, mm -hmm. and they have a, a program called Benograut. Uh, basically, they use bentonite, and they'll go every couple feet and they'll drill in to the, the depth of the foundation, and then they'll pressurize the bentonite up along the, the face of the foundations to go ahead and put in a, a watertight seal. Bentonite's a type of mixture that can swell uh, two to five times its size when it gets wet. So it, it's, it's just kind of like a self-healing, self-swelling type material. 
That's that, what they that use around well off. casings and stuff. Too, yes, right? exactly right. Yeah, it's a, a slurry fill. Yes. And um, most of the foundations these days are all poured concrete. But let's go back to block again. Uh, step cracking, when it's just following the mortar joints, is that a structural concern sometimes? So sometimes it can be. That might be if uh, the ground maybe had a differential settlement that something like that might start to occur. Uh, just that might depend upon compaction or yeah. basically if, if your house was put in on a, a fill site and say they compacted it by 95 percent, well there's still an extra five percent that was left over for long-term settlement and through time you, you'll get some sort of settlement type cracks. But it moves away from the, uh, the mortar joints and starts cracking the webs. Mm -hmm. Is that um, becoming concerning? If it was, yes. Okay. Yep. And um, if the, if you see, if you're in a corner and you see the crack going down this wall and then down this wall, uh, and you've got a settlement problem in the corner. That, that's where you would start looking because <laughs> that's obviously going to be your focal point. And, and then it's trying to, to figure out why that's uh, occurring because uh, if you can help fix it, or you know a, a different type of process to improve it would be uh, injection grouting with concrete and try to bring it back up or other sorts of techniques. Hydraulic lifting. Yeah, and, and obviously that gets expensive. So it's better yeah. to probably see the problems before they get too large and see if there's something you can do ahead of time. Address the smaller issues first, such as groundwater runoff and roof discharge. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, here again in the real estate transaction, it's a limited time frame, and that solution can take you know a full season. You may need to wait a whole year to see if it helped or solved or did anything for it. That's true. Yeah. Yep. So you know they go into panic situations, and I want it fixed now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way everybody wants it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a, a perfect house out there. Uh, I found a couple that were close, but uh, I haven't found a perfect one yet. So when does something become a structural issue in a foundation um, in a house? Uh, would it be from differential displacement, uh, the thickness or width of the crack? A lot of times it, it depends on probably almost who's evaluating. Mm -hmm. the, the cracks, obviously, as you mentioned, for a small crack, it might be, uh, if the homeowner is highly particular, then they might be looking for some sort of patch or remediation. And, and then, obviously, once you, you get into, like, the half-inch range, you, you have something that's noticeable and probably something that should be looked at. And I've seen cracks that have been patched, and they're cracking again, which most times to me indicates that it hasn't reached its point of stability yet and it's still active. That, that's true. And w one case that we ran across that was interesting uh, locally in the, the county is instead of using uh, some clean stone underneath of uh, the foundation and, and slabs, they, they put in a, a furnace slag. And Which they didn't for allow the water to go through. <laughs> That, but it, it actually has an expansion coefficient. Oh. So it likes to swell up and contract and swell and contract to where it was displacing windows and roof joints. Hmm. Well, and you were able to identify that yep, problem? Yeah, we, we were. This was an older home or new home? Uh, it was a, an, an older building. Okay. Yep. And was there a repair option? Uh, that type of option, it was more of the, the drastic type option. And tear the floor out and remove the stone and start again. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's not always a quick fix uh, with any kind of structural issues. Uh, and most of them occur over long periods of time. It takes a long time for them to show up. And the proper repair sometimes is drastic, sometimes it's relatively minor. Exactly right. Okay. So if, if you see cracks in your foundation, the direction of movement is typically diagonal from the crack itself? Mm-hmm. Okay. It is. 
and that's how you identify a you know if you got going down two corner sides it, it would more than likely be the corner uh, i've seen them where it starts in the middle of the wall and goes this way and the middle of the wall over here and goes this way which means the center of the foundation is has got a problem <laughs> um, so you do residential construction diagnosis uh, for structural issues we do okay yep. and um, if you do find a problem uh, do you do repairs? Do you offer names? Uh, we don't do any repairs, but obviously here in Berks County, there's a, a lot of good people who do repair, and they're part of the, the Home Builders Association. Okay. So if you contact Christian Mazelik there, uh, he's a, a great resource, and for a particular type of concern, uh, he would certainly take care of you. So the Home Builders Association, uh, basically any kind of home repair that you need is not they don't just build homes. Correct. <laughs> they help people all the way through. There's lots of existing owners out there. All right. Um, and you came with uh, slides and stuff. I, I did. We, ha we haven't used a, a photo yet. Well, is there one particular, any particular ones you'd like to share with the audience? Sure. Uh, if you want to go ahead and start bringing up the. This, I guess maybe the second slide. I think we already talked okay. about the, the first. Um, that project there, it's a subdivision project. Mm -hmm. It's located in Lower Heidelberg Township. Okay. Uh, Glenn Gary, uh, the brick manufacturer, right. actually had owned the parcel, and they did a lot of quarrying efforts pretty much since the 1950s at that location. And it, as they went through their quarrying process for their brick, uh, they came to a point to where they were no longer really interested in quarrying that site any further. And part of the reclamation process was to do a, a land development subdivision job over top of that site. It was about 180. On, on fill? It, it was actually, it was, um, they, they dug into the side of the hill. Oh, uh, okay. So it was almost more a grade taking down uh, the land as they went because okay. they kind of chipped away at it. I see a red line on the uh, on the slide. What does that uh, uh, indicate? That that was the additional phasing that went along with that project. So phase two, so the, the next step in the project. Exactly. There was about 92 houses that would be associated with the project, and each one of them was at least a, an acre in size. So with that, any developer or builder who would be really interested in uh, purchasing that site could go ahead and buy off that certain phase from, from that owner and then mm -hmm. continue on through. Okay. Interesting. Uh, the, the next slide that we have is the, the Livingstone subdivision. Uh, that's down closer to Morgantown uh, in Robinson Township. Okay. And that one w we did with uh, Mr. Ed Cohn, CF Capital. And basically it's a large lot subdivision where uh, probably the minimum is five acres. So wow. that, that one's coming along. It's not uh, quite horse country there at, at his <laughs> site, but it is some very large lots. And if somebody was looking for privacy or something like that with their, their houses, that could you certainly be. You need 10 or more in. acres to um, have horses or? Sometimes you do. Yeah. And there are certainly sites there where people could have that if, if they needed. Buy a couple lots. Yep, exactly <laughs> right. Uh, the next slide that we have uh, was something where we were working with some apartments up along Route 12, just be at the, the base of the hill around Reading. Okay. Um, and there we were putting in an emergency access so that the, the fire or police could access that location faster into the, the future. And we're working with PennDOT uh, to go ahead and get a point of access for that because it's a limited access highway. From Route 12. From Route 12 itself. So that, that was Good pretty special. <laughs> so uh, obviously it always takes a little bit of time working with your government agencies. Uh, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of good people in there. And a lot of yeah, there is. A lot of times it's, it's just, just tangled up in red tape all the time. It's just working with the, the process or the, the pipeline. So um, how, how would somebody contact you if they had to? if they had concerns about the foundation or wanted to do, do a land development program? Sure. Uh, you can always contact us at 610-678-3071, our telephone number, 
or our website, uh, www.bogieng.com. Okay. That's great. Uh, okay. Well, Greg, it's been great to have you on as a guest tonight, and I really appreciate your time and your input here. Sure. Uh, and I hope everybody enjoyed the show, and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you again next month. Thank you very much.